All right, we can get started. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. So even this day, today is very, very important day. And uh, today is uh, as we are stepping into the third session, which is like a more like a uh, advanced uh, session. There we go. Okay, so there are 3,000 prophecies mentioned in the uh, Bible. And uh, 3,000 is a lot of number. And uh, throughout the period of like several thousand years, the prophecies were written. Look at the Bible. The Bible was written like uh, from the uh, all the way from the beginning until like um, um, the disciples of Jesus. That is like uh, um, 4,000 years. For the first 4,000 years is the Old Testament. And then we see that after that Jesus was born and the New Testament has begun. And then we see that like the disciples wrote somewhere in the 100, um, 130 or some something around that that uh, 70 AD, around that time, a lot of uh, New Testament has been written. So 3,000 prophecies are there. And uh, so, yes. And out of 3,000 prophecies, like um, so many prophecies are already fulfilled and many are happening today and many are going to happen in the future. So revelation, a lot of things in the revelation is something like uh, for the future, right? Many of them, major majority of them are for the future. So many things are happening, but then like many of them are for the future as well. So about the second coming, that is a prophecy that is like concerning the future. And uh, about the first coming, that is also prophecy, but it is fulfilled. There are 65 prophecies about the first coming of Jesus and also um, the life of Jesus. So out of all those 65 prophecies about the life of Jesus and also the birth of Jesus, Everything was fulfilled, 65. So historians say the probability of 65 prophecies written over the period of 3,500 years, like all the way from the uh, Moses or like even before like Genesis, all the way till um, the uh, end of the Old Testament, we see that many, many prophecies are written. 65 of them are about Jesus and all the 65 has been fulfilled. The probability is one in billion. So because... Many historians predicted many things, um, but not 65 things they predicted. And not all the 65 things, even though they predicted 65, not all the 65 was fulfilled. So that is the very, very important thing about um, God and the kingdom of God and who our God is. So it's very important to realize and understand that God wants us to realize that his prophecies are meant to fulfill. His prophecies are meant to fulfill 65 prophecies about jesus fulfilled and every prophecies in your life and the prophecies that you are going to release will be fulfilled it's going to be very powerful so one of the prophecy about jesus is jesus went and he opened the blind eyes and then isaiah um, told that he will open the blind eyes and uh, that exactly fulfilled and jesus he went and opened it opened the scripture in the synagogue and he told it today the scripture was fulfilled. So he was the fulfillment of prophecy. If you ask like Jesus, Jesus is the first person in the history who fulfilled most prophecies ever, period. There are so many prophecies about many other um, people in the Bible, like Moses. Moses means uh, deliverer. He will draw people. He will deliver people. And, and Moses, he, draw, he was drawn from the water. So they named him Moses. And also we see that he's the deliverer. He's the deliverer of people. And that was fulfilled. There are prophecies concerning each in the Bible and that was fulfilled. But there are 65 prophecies concerning one person that is the son of God, that is Jesus. And everything was fulfilled, including his birth and his death and resurrection and the finished work. And uh, I, I, Isaiah, Isaiah talks about like Jesus' crucifixion. No one knows the crucifixion will exist. At the time of Isaiah, there is no crucifixion. Imagine that. Let, let that, you know, like... Um, Several um, years back, there was like a penalty in the um, court system of like um, hanging. But then like that is really changed to lethal. And and so, so the point that I'm trying to tell is Jesus took our punishment, but they don't know that it is going to be crucifixion. Romans introduced crucifixion. But Isaiah, several hundred years back, he understood because God is really showing about the gruesome death of Jesus. How is it even possible? That's why the theologians and historians and atheists and unbelievers are, they're 
trembling how is it even possible many unbelievers are saved because of prophecy i'm talking about like logos not even rema on on that time and the season it is the rema because it, it, it for, for us today it's a written word because it's uh, written and it is fulfilled but on that time and the season during the time of isaiah the people are receiving a rema word of god there is a hope there is a savior who is going to come his name is jesus he is going to come and save us from our sin he is going to save israel he is going to save gentile he is going to die on our behalf and he is going to go through this crucifixion although he didn't work, used to the word crucifixion he described pretty much everything isaiah has no idea no one was crucified at, on that day that day and the time and the age it's very important anyway um it's very important so jesus fulfilled every prophecy small and big prophecy so i want you to really understand that prophecies are meant to be fulfilled in a powerful way it is glorious so that being said and also uh, let's move on to the next one yes so god wants us to always realize that the word that proceeds from the mouth of god will never return in void it will never return in void they always fulfill they always be fulfilled it's a powerful and also we see in the book of acts chapter 9 12 acts 9 12 so this is a very very powerful 9 and verse 12 you see that in a vision he has seen a man named ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight so this is a prophetic vision a prophecy is not limited just to um words because word is the final way of releasing the prophecy but god can able to give a prophecy through a vision and dream that is also coming under the prophecy so here paul who is unbeliever at that point in time he is not 100% saved he his eyes were blinded but in a vision saul is seeing a vision saul before he become paul 912 acts in a, a man named ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight so did it happen it did happen so god so paul can tell pretty much like anyone like hey i'm seeing a vision of a man coming and opening my eyes of course he is not a doctor he is uh, he is from god ananias so that's really powerful to see how um how he is able to see that vision and how he this vision is a prophecy prophetic vision and this prophetic vision fulfills so sometimes god can able to teach you to prophesy or he can able to show you a vision of what is coming we see that peter he saw he he has to uh, prophetically move when he saw a big cage full of multiple various different animals and um, came down it looks like unclean animals for peter because god defines certain things as unclean so in the bible so you cannot eat certain things right so um, we see that paul P- peter got told eat everything you don't have to really consider some as unclean so eat everything so that's kind of a confirmation that peter is going to minister unto gentiles that was not the case until that point so prophetically god was able to move peter and by giving a prophetic vision so prophetic vision is powerful prophetic vision is very very important and very very unique and uh, uh, we see that in the first king chapter 3 and verse 5 there are 105 prophetic dream mentioned in the bible dreams and visions 105 everything was fulfilled so both believers and unbelievers god's people and ungodly people got a vision from god Laban got a vision he's not a godly person he's not even knowing our god only jacob know our god but god gave a vision to laban to not to touch he spoke to laban in a vision in a dream i would say dream primarily so god told don't touch jacob that's it if you touch you are done so same god told to abimelech in the book of genesis god told you cannot touch sarah sarah is Abraham's wife you cannot able to do any harm to Sarah you cannot do what you want so that's a dream prophetic dream that's a key and Abimelech a foreign king and and 
what you call like gentile king or ungodly king he was able to hear from god if he can able to hear how much more you and me the children of god can able to see the visions and dreams you and i are significant to god so you need to really understand and this should really boost your faith that god is a god who can also speak to you and me through visions and dreams it's very essential yes first kings 3 5 so that is really important that's a wonderful reference of first kings 3 and verse 5 so you can read those things um later right so in the first kings 3 5 solomon showed his love for the lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father david that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places so and verse 5 at gibeon the lord appeared to solomon during the night in a dream and god asked ask whatever you want me to give you so that's also a prophetic dream but god is really interacting in the dream see can god interact with you in the dream that's the first time in the history to my knowledge where god interacted in the dream and uh we see that he was responding to god who solomon and that's really a powerful reference of dream prophetic dream and god's interaction genesis 41 and verse 7 to 8 so i think that's the reference of genesis 41 and verse 7 to 8 is also a very good reference that we are just meditating now and joseph saw his brother he knew them but made himself strange unto them and and spake roughly unto them and he said unto them when come okay so anyway uh this is like genesis 42 7 and 8 is talking about joseph but joseph had a dream and the dream was fulfilled that all the brothers will come and come and lay down in other words so he literally joseph was a prince of egypt and here we see that the brothers of joseph they were all coming and coming down to joseph to receive help he is the last who joseph is the last in the family but the dream prophetic dream that joseph received and that got into lot of trouble but did the dream fulfill this is the fulfillment of the dream fulfillment of prophecy there are like this there are 105 prophetic dreams that are fulfilled in the scripture so so you know like as you meditate upon these this will really edify you this will really strengthen you this will really thrill you this will really give you more faith to believe in the dreams and the visions and the prophecy of god this is really powerful god told jacob directional dream or direct, directional prophecies is there so god told god told jacob go go to your uncle's home but then i'll bring you back that's a directional dream god is giving a direction to jacob don't afraid yeah your your brother is trying to kill you and i i know what you did it's 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 okay you go go to lay, go to your uncle's home and i'll bring you back safely so that's a that's a amazing prophetic directional prophetic a prophetic in a regarding the direction i was ministering to someone yesterday and god showed that person is going to australia and god told in one month of time and that's the time god gave you are you will be in australia and and that person is in some other place and uh, uh, god god told certain directional dream so that you can release so god showed me africa in a in a dream or a vision and then god told af go to africa that's a directional dream prophetic dream for me concerning africa and i did go and that was fulfilled in 2018 and god can give you a directional dream so he can able to give you a directional vision it is really powerful all right so <clears throat> that being said the next one we can see directional dream god told joseph mother of sorry the husband of uh, mary we see that god told the directional take your child that is jesus go to egypt and stay there until i tell you that's a directional prophecy so god gives you directional prophecy it is biblical god god directly gave and also god can also give through people there's one instance um we see that in the book of acts 912 there was a macedonian man came in paul's dream acts 912 
912. So there was a Macedonian man. So, and then, oh, no, this is like, uh, this is like 912 is about Ananias, but later on in the Acts. Um, so there was a Macedonian man. I'm trying to find the reference. So he came in the dream and then Paul went to, went to Macedonia. And uh, that, that's a fulfillment of directional dream, 16, Acts 16, 9 to 12. That night, Paul had a dream. A Macedonian man stood on the shore and called across the sea, come over to Macedonia and help us. The dream gave Paul his map. We went to work at once, getting things ready to cross over to Macedonia. God can give you a prophetic dream or a prophetic directional dream by giving you some nation to go or by giving you some place to go, giving you, showing you some people's face to go and visit them. How did Elizabeth had a very, Elizabeth and Mary, they met basically. Probably God would have inspired them to go and meet. Directional dream. God would can show you some face. Sometimes God can show your parents or uh, some your, your brother or sister. To, they may need a ministry. So God may lead you to go and talk to them or see them prophetically. When you're a prophetic person, then you can able to move in the prophetic realm. You will move in the realm of the prophetic. So God will give you so did all the people receive dream every day? No, not really. When God sees that it is really needed, um, that he need to um, lead you, very emergency, very important, he need to lead you, then he will lead you. There was a time I ministered unto someone who was about to commit suicide. I do not know, but God told, minister unto them. They contacted me through online. I said, God, uh, there are hundreds of requests comes in, but God said, like this person, you got to call them. Just take the phone and call them, ask them, ask the number and call them. So God sometimes really, and, and after calling only, I know that that person is going through like about to uh, end the life. So God can able to use you dream or like he can able to speak to you or he can give you a vision on time anointing when the things are emergency, right? So other times God can speak through your heart itself because like there is a time for you to uh recognize God is inspiring certain things for you to do. So dreams and visions are a quick, quick thing from God, right? So that like you will have no doubt, absolutely no doubt or whatsoever. Um, you can able to just move and act on it. So that's very important, right? So these are all like prophetic dreams and prophetic direction. So prophetic warning, that's the warning that God gave to Joseph and Mary, like take the child and go because they're trying to seek to destroy the baby. So, yeah, today the important thing is in the prophecy and the gift of prophecy for you to minister in prophecy. You need to recognize that you are son and daughter of God. And also the person you are prophesying, they are son and daughter of God. So, so today in the new covenant, the prophecy comes in parts. They don't come in full package. God did not told Jesus will be born here in Nazareth and then um, sorry, Bethlehem and then he'll move to uh, Nazareth and he will grow as a Nazarene and then um, he'll be in the family of uh, uh, David and then like he will do miracle signs and wonders. He will heal the sick, raise the dead. Um, so And also he will open the blind eyes and then he will uh, go through the crucifixion and then he die. No, he did not say all at the same time. These are all like 4,000 years told by multiple prophets and um, multiple people and uh, Multiple things. So prophecy is the parts and pieces. Over the period of 4,000 years, things about Jesus. Even not everything about Jesus was told at the same time. That's what I mean to say. So when you give prophecy to someone, God will reveal a portion of the prophecy. right? Not the whole thing. When uh, Samuel anointed David as a king, God told, go and anoint, them, anoint him prophetically. So David knows only one thing. That God has chosen me. That's it. That's all David knows. Will he know that he is going to be, um, you know, like uh, having this whole victory and and defeating Goliath? You don't know anything. Did, did Samuel told you're going to face a giant very soon? No, he did not say. But there are so many prophecies that he told. Samuel told to David, time to time, yeah, go for this battle, you will win. Prophecy, a parts and pieces. So prophecy always comes in a part and piece. God doesn't give you a history of like a lecture for like everything. 
he can give you multiple things in an in an hour or like in few minutes he can god can able to reveal certain things concerning a person but he don't technically tell like a complete like probably like several years maybe like few things god can tell at the same time as well so that's what i want to, i would like you to know that it's a it's prophecy is a, a parts and piece so we pursue the word of god and he impress in our heart so that's the new covenant prophecy so god really you 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 pursue the word you you perceive you so god gives you an a word or an inspiration prophetically so you perceive the word and then you interpret the word and then you release the word that's why like god told um ezekiel god gives the context of dry bones and then god is really um you know like um, impressing on ezekiel's heart to prophesy and then ezekiel prophesied it's not like god really took the mouth of ezekiel and prophesied prophecy is not something like god comes in your mouth and or tongue and then speak no prophecy is something you speak because god is impressing things on your heart you are perceiving something the perception is has come and you have a confidence now maybe like you have like 10% confidence that's okay but because you are receiving something from heaven you you are decoding what the word or what is god is really inspiring or impressing on your heart and you are perceiving that word and you are releasing that by coining the word god won't speak for you you speak for god and god says that you are my mouthpiece so you got to speak so you got to speak but god will really impresses in your heart and he gives you some certain what do you call like the egg the 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 rhema the core substance the seed god will give you and you you will speak on that so god did not teach ezekiel what are all the words he can speak he said like will the dry bones become life prophesy then you prophesy what he would have been prophesying command all these dry bones let the nerves the neurological system flesh and blood everything form and let everything become an army so that is something like ezekiel has to prophesy god god can give you the substance but then ezekiel has to prophesy the words and details of it and god will fulfill it because god endorsed that in the first place so i wanted you to understand that so many times people don't prophesy because they think i didn't receive a word no god will receive you the substance he gives you the inspiration he gives you the impression in your heart he gives you the core thing uh, but then you have to prophesy how how as you that's what like in the fifth activation session i'm going to lead you to prophesy so uh, it is going to be very very special so i so we have one more session and then activation so next week it we won't have session but the following week we will have the fourth session um and then like um, later we'll have an activation session that's the fifth session so anyway this is really going to be amazing so it's really powerful directional prophecy we saw prophetic dream and vision we saw and prophecies coming in parts and dreams we saw and uh, also like um, we see that in the first kings 197 First Kings nineteen seven. Let's let's see First Kings nineteen seven about Elijah. First Kings nineteen seven. The angels can also prophetically move in people's life. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, "Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you." See, that's an angel is prophesying to to Ezekiel. Sorry, to Elijah. Elijah was really you know like Elijah prophesied to many people and many. kings and uh, nations level prophecy but then he was down and downcasted and he was really depressed and oppressed and he was so much of in pain uh, but then god sent the angel you know like see that is the thing like there is nobody there to prophesy to elijah at that time and the season because elisha was not there yet so nobody could able to come and console elijah from his fear and anxiety and his threat and everything that he is going through elijah God sent the angels among like little out of the world, and God is telling you have to go long journey. Do you know that Elijah? God has a long journey for you. Directional prophecy, and an angel is giving the food for. So do you know that the angels are ministering? Um, the angels are ministering spirits from God. He sent. So God sends angel on your way. It's really powerful. It's really really amazing to see. when when that when there is a need you know like god god when there is a need god does it when there is a need god does it so i want you to understand there is a um, person in a middle east nobody is there in that in that place to share uh, uh, deliver a person but god really wanted to deliver a person because have no idea but then an angel of god appeared and then 
brought that person to the next direction and out of the out of the challenge um and was able to found jesus so god can able to i mean obviously angels did not preach the gospel but the angel led that person to somebody else who can able to share the gospel and led to lead to jesus it's really powerful god is god who sends his angel when there is no other person around but god wants to get something done so god can do anything that he wants to do even if it requires to send the angel he will do it that's how god did it there is nobody there for god to deliver lot from sodom and gomorrah so god sent an angel god sent angels to angel um same up, uh, applicable to many many instances in the bible there are more angelic activity um in the old testament and even new testament is not limited but then thing is new testament god's god god is able to speak through an another man of god or woman of god and prophesy over your life so the need for angel is less compared to the of the old testament where there is nobody there for elijah to come and console hey elijah nobody can able to come and console elijah um but he himself when he himself was down so that's really amazing to that's a smart move of god god really know how to use what and uh, what to do so if you really discern why god does certain things you may not understand that day but after several years you will know oh yeah that's the reason why god sent an angel because there's nobody there right and elijah is not in a mood to listen to somebody else he will just shut them off but the moment when angel came his eyes he was able to open receptive and he see that this is not a normal being this is god's creation god's being but anyway so that's really powerful and and interesting the direction the angel is telling about the direction the angel know the plans of god even in parts not in full when gabriel came to mary nobody can able to come to mary in the humanly possible tell you're going to have a baby and uh, but you are not going to be married you're going to have a baby it's a virgin birth so mary won't believe in the first place basically so because and nobody will be even telling because nobody um had that audacity to go and tell to mary that way so god has to send an angel about the birth of jesus through gabriel so that's really important the context is important so that's also prophetic the angels operate in the prophetic and uh, um everyone is prophetically operating god's kingdom is prophetic god is prophetic and jesus is prophetic and all the people ministers of god are prophetic in nature so god wants you to operate in the prophecy so this is the key this is the foundation right so very very powerful yes so there is certain things called as like prophetic transformation or trans trans is something you see that paul he was prophetically taken into trans he said like i don't know whether in my body or out of body i went all the way to third heaven and i saw certain things paul is saying trans peter also that's also he was like literally not sleeping or uh, he is not in a um, vision but he is interacting trans is something or interacting in a dream in other words so in a daytime in a daytime and uh, night time doesn't matter he, so basically like peter was really awake and he was not even like sleeping or, so he saw certain trans happening like god is really bringing certain thing and he's interact god is telling like take and eat and he's responding back consciously right not just a dream like something happening some incident and then wake up oh yeah i saw this macedonian man in a dream but never paul never interacted that's a dream but here in the trance you interact right you interact um but god peter is answering god how can i eat this is unclean and god says no 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 when i mean eat it so right so that's a trance and and paul taken up to third heaven but he is really interacting seeing things but he don't know whether he is in body or out of body because he is able to feel the uh, reality it's like a real reality you know like virtual reality came very later but the real re- reality is god's way real reality but st- though you it's it's not really physically happening but it's a real reality that's a trance prophetic trance and um, that's really amazing to see there is one person one minister of god uh, in in florida and he went in a trance god literally he opened a door prophetically because like in, in his home and then when he opened the door he saw he stepping out into a china physically right that's like in trance so he saw there was a huge building and god told him in that trance go underground 
and he walked through the steps that was going down to the garage down all the way to two levels and on the corner there's a small group of people in a small room they gathered and they were really praising jesus in secret god told go and join them so very very few people like probably like 10 to 15 people and god told this person i mean this minister to go and join them and he joined them and then god told now minister unto them he was speaking that that lang chinese language although although he is not a, he's an american and he he doesn't know chinese but in the trance trance is it's, it's happening i'll tell you what happened so he preached there and then um he ministered and they received powerfully and he was preaching for a long time some time and then like he came back and then the the, the trance was over after he ministered the trance was over the the door was really open and he's back to his home uh, here in florida and then after several days he is getting an email stating thank you for coming to our place here in china and we are so blessed so it means like in the trance he also shared his contact visiting card in the trance but the thing is god connected the trance to the reality later he realized it it indeed really happened is it possible with god all things are possible is it happening every day to him not at all in that time and the season and the age god doesn't have anybody there in the china underground church to know the secrets of god and the word of god nobody is that to preach there or they don't know the language so god really used a man of god who is willing to take any risk for a risk and god took his he can tell i don't know whether it is in body or out of body but i interacted with them i spoke in chinese and then they received it and and here is a proof god god really thrilled him he really he thought it's all just a dream and you know like it's really nice maybe one day i got to go to china the good news is he already went to china and came back in the trance this is what exactly happened to philip god told philip go get caught up to the to the chariot where you know just going uh, next moment he was in the next to the um chariot god, I, so after sorry after ministering to the chariot the spirit of god took philip from that place to another place the spirit of god can able to take you to nations is it happening every day for everyone not really is it is it possible yes of course it is possible did it happen yes it is happened in the bible and also in the real world be ready it's going to thrill you powerful move of god god is so powerful and so amazing and so victorious you can't imagine the potential of prophetic anointing and the moment you are exposed to the revelation of these that i'm sharing today so that's why he's unlimited god he can do unlimited things impossible things unimaginable things it's powerful hallelujah all right so this is really powerful so yes prophecy is partial so god told uh, abraham son you can, you you go to this place i'll show you and then god told i'm going to bless you with a child and then god told that i'll multiply you and then god told prophecy over abraham's life directly from god there is nobody nobody there as a prophet so god has to directly talk to abraham uh, you know like directly even god he's prophet in nature as well although he's god he's also prophet in nature so he prophetically speaking to abraham time to time and then parts and pieces and abraham's life was fulfilled by combining all the prophecies god spoken over him did everything fulfill yes everything fulfilled how because he received in faith and also he operated in faith that's the key so that's amazing to see abraham how god himself as a prophet to abraham and uh, he told everything in parts and pieces and everything was fulfilled and even samuel to david also partial that i said you know like that's why like uh, david always goes and seek samuel seek uh, samuel seeks god and then brings the prophetic word to da- david so david received a lot of word from samuel everything was partial 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 and was fulfilled it's fulfilled god is amazing Bible says in the 1st Corinthians 13 9 to 12 write it down 1st Corinthians 13 9 to 12 for we know in part and we prophesy in part Paul is saying this I don't know everything about you but I know certain things when I ask God God will reveal certain things to share with you about you so I know in part and prophesy in part 
but when completeness come what is in part disappears that's about like when when jesus comes then obviously you don't need prophecy because like you live in the present moment knowing everything you will get a full full revelation everything right so when i was a child i talked like a child i thought like a child i reasoned like a child but when i become a man i put the ways of childhood behind me for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror and we shall see face to face now i know in part then i shall know in full now i know in part then i shall know fully even as i am fully known so here paul is saying this like prophecy whatever you know a part of the things you prophesy that's it that's the key so you know like when um, the one who do sculpture right you know uh, they have like tools to uh, do and create a sculpture like a, a design they don't know everything in full they just started uh, with a small hand or like a small eyes or face so the people who is seeing they don't know fully they see only the eye coming and then the face coming and then the hand coming that's a part the artist or the sculptor he don't really just like make okay i'm i made this full sculpture that's it here we go no he makes parts and parts and and then parts and pieces and put and everything together he makes the whole big sculpture that's a very good example of prophecy that's how prophecy also works deuteronomy 29 29 deuteronomy 29 and verse 29 is also very very powerful passage the secret things belongs to the lord our god but the things that are revealed belong to us to our children forever to us and our children forever that we may do all the words of this law so prophecy secret things belongs to god god knows the secret god knows everything when is the next president coming and who is that president and god knows when is the prime minister of the nation you are from or when is this happening when is this specific incident going to happen or when are you in your life when is the, the things that is going to launch in your life concerning your marriage concerning your life concerning your children concerning your ministry concerning your business concerning everything god knows everything everything that is secret god knows the secret thing belongs to our lord our god but the things that are revealed so god reveals the few portion of the secret to us to get hold of to give to be edified and to be growing in faith and relationship in god that i said last session um a prophecy will bring people close to god will edify them will uh, will give them hope will make them to believe there is a god who is really working on behalf of them and he loves them what here deuteronomy 29 29 whatever god revealed to israelites or to individually it belongs to us and our children so god told i'm going to give you the canaan so they hold off that they got hold off that that's a prophecy god gave a prophecy i'll give you the land where milk and honey is going to flow go and uh, they hold they get hold of that and that belong to them and their children was it fulfilled yeah it is fulfilled we are seeing right now israel is present today that's really amazing so that if you will follow the word of god people who receive the prophecy they will go to scripture and they will follow the word follow god so that the the script so that the prophecy will be fulfilled it's really powerful that's deuteronomy 29 29 proverbs let's see proverbs 25 2 proverbs 25 2 is also a powerful it is the glory of god to conceal a matter to search out a matter is the glory of kings you are the kings and royal priesthood what is your importance your importance is to search the heart of god and then like because god conceals the matter but a king that is you as a royal priesthood king and royal priesthood bible says you are searching the things of god that's why i said in the first session prophecy is like you deep diving deep into the sea and then find that pearl that is very big or small whatever the size of pearl based on how deep you go how extreme you go you can able to find that pearl and you can able to release it confidently over a person so you are a king you are a son and daughter of god and god has so many secrets that he concealed and as you dive into the depth of god with god and he will reveal certain things to you to speak boldly like how that bones god showed prophesy and and like that god can show you certain things you can prophesy it will fulfill how is it all operating through faith no obligation that is god is not obligated to show you anything and you are not obligated to get anything from god you are operating in faith for the edification for 
for bringing people close to God, right? So prophecy in the New Testament is for edification, correction, and so many other things. Let's, let's see that passage, right? Prophecy is for edification, right? So there's a passage here in the scripture, 1 Corinthians 14.3. Why prophecy? Why do we prophesy? 1 Corinthians 14.3. But he that prophesies speaks to men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Even in some other places we see that, even for correction as well. So edification, exhortation, and comfort. These are the three main reasons to encourage someone, to build them up, to bring comfort to them. That's why you prophesy. That's why God prophesied. That's what exactly that angel told to Elijah. Elijah, you got to go a long way. Elijah thought he will die today, that Jezebel is going to come and kill by the end of the day. But God said, no, you got to go a long journey. Oh, so I'm going to be alive. I'm comforted. Thank you, God. I'm really comforted today. I'm going to eat this food that the angel is giving. And uh, who is this Jezebel? I don't care. Because God gave a word through angel, a prophetic word, that I'm going to go long journey. Did he go? Yes, he go. What did he do? He anointed and raised Jehu. He anointed and raised um, Elisha. And he really passed the baton and mantle. And he's the one, only one person who took alive. When, when the enemy threatened that I will kill you, God said, you will not die. See, that's, see, God is really having certain things. There is no reason why God has to take Elijah up while he did not take anybody else up. Right? Why? Because Jezebel threatened, I'm going to kill you. And God threatened Jezebel. He's not even going to die. Come on. Listen to me. God said like he was not even going to die. There are so many Jezebels after that in nature. The spirit of Jezebel, the court substance Jezebel is the one who is in the Bible. But then like there are so many Jezebels even today. But God challenges Jezebel too. He proved them wrong. And he will tell, you are telling you are going to kill the prophet. I am telling this prophet is not even going to see death at all. How about that? Can we see who does what? That's really powerful of God. You know, like God, God has sense of humor and also God has challenging nature and he also reverses everything. Powerful God, glorious God. This is going to be so victorious. Samuel doesn't know about David when he anointed Saul as king. Samuel know in parts. He doesn't know, Saul, you are going to be king for a short time and then David is going to come. No, he doesn't know. Samuel knows things in parts. A prophet doesn't know everything on a day one. As days goes on, God reveals. There's a conditional prophecy. If Saul kept on following God's word and believe in the prophet, that is Samuel, he would have prospered. Believe in the prophets and he will prosper. So, But Saul did not believe in Samuel, not in God fully. He became proud and arrogant. He became like so much of self-esteem and he thought like he has great power. He can able to do what he want. He doesn't need God's consultation or confirmation. That really made him to drift away. So God has to reason another part of the prophecy to Samuel. Go and anoint Jesse's son. Even he don't know which son is that. God has to give another confirmation. God, is this the person? Prophetically speak to me. No, this is not the person. Ask if there is one, anybody else other than these children. Yes, there is one more son out there in the... Um, field, bring him. Yes, he's the guy. Anoint him. So Samuel, no parts and pieces. He doesn't know everything in fully. Prophecy and prophetic move, prophetic anointing and prophetically walking is not like completely wholesome on a day one. It is as you continue to interact and depend on God, God will give you the next step, the next step, the next step. It's very important. So very, very essential. Daniel 7, 13 to 14. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. This is also a powerful, let's see here. In my vision at night, I looked and there, there before me was one like a son of man. This is Daniel um, seeing a vision about Jesus coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days, was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. This is about Jesus' second coming. And he is establishing where all the nations, tribes and everyone worshipping Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. And he is coming in the clouds. When Jesus came first time, he did not come through the clouds. He came through a virgin birth, through the spirit. 
but then he's going to come again in the cloud. So, so Daniel is seeing a vision about something that's about to come in the future. And that was later reconfirmed by God in many, many instances to Paul and to, to John and in the Revelation and many other places. You know, like uh, that's the amazing thing about prophecy. God gives everyone a fresh rhema, fresh anointing, and they don't know each other. Daniel doesn't know Paul. Paul doesn't, although Paul might have read, but the thing is like, or John might have read about Daniel, but still it's a fresh revelation. God is giving more clarity. It's really powerful. So 1 Samuel 9.15, conditional prophecy. 1 Samuel 9.15, we're going to finish up here. 1 Samuel 9.15. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord has revealed this to Samuel. About this tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him, rule over the people. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people, for their cry has reached me. Now the day before Saul came. Now the day before Saul came. That's 15. And it's really amazing to see. These are all like uh, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. So there are conditions. That's what we saw that, right? God gave a condition to Saul, but obviously he did not go through. So God has to find an, another person to use same Samuel, while Samuel doesn't have any knowledge initially. But God already know what Saul is going to do, although he doesn't really control Saul. But through the foreknowledge, God knows everything. That's why God knows all secret. But when you ask God, he will give you a glimpse of it, what is needed for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Right? So, but now your kingdom will not end you. So here, 1 Samuel 13 and verse 14. Now, but now your kingdom will not end you. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's commandment. This is a conditional prophecy. So basically, like God told um, um, Saul, conditionally keep the word so that you can able to be the king. God, God, there is no need for God to look for David. If Saul have kept the commandment, there was a conditional prophecy. So Saul is explaining, sorry, Samuel is explaining to Saul. Now you did not kept the Lord's commandment. So you did not kept the word of God. God, so that's why like not every prophecy are meant to fulfill. When God anointed Saul to be a king, it did not fulfill fully. Like God, I mean, like God's plan changed because Saul's plan changed. His way of life changed, Right. So, so that's why like prophecies, there are some prophecies that are conditional. There are many prophecies that are unconditional. Um, we, will, we will see that conditional prophecy and unconditional prophecy. So conditional prophecy like Saul's life, this is one of the very good example. But Christ died for all. That's unconditional. He died for all, irrespective of anyone. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Unconditional prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. Anyone today believe they have a choice to... Um, be a son and daughter of God. He died for all. Con no condition. No strings attached. He died for all. For sinners primarily. So what else can able to go under the sinner? Nothing. So, and but there's a conditional prophecy. God told you will have dominion if you do not eat that fruit. That's a conditional prophecy. God gave dominion, authority to rule over, right? So to Adam and Eve, if you do not eat that tree, then you will live. If you eat the tree, you will die. So that's a conditional prophecy. God is giving a choice with condition. There are sometimes God can able to speak through you to someone conditionally. So, I, you know, like I still remember God sometimes tell, if you listen to my voice, then I will fulfill this quickly. If you, you know, like um, give heed or if you take a decision today, then you can able to move forward. So that's the conditional prophecy. So yeah, let's, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for today. It is such a, Powerful uh, prophetic teaching, anointing, school of prophecy, the session three. I plead your blood upon everyone. Thank you, Father. I bless the Father God that as everyone of everyone who is re receiving to continue to see supernatural grace and supernatural manifestation. Let them operate in the prophetic realm and let them understand the depth of prophecy. Uh, you all are going to be prophets because God's word says that everyone can prophesy, prophesy according to the measure of your faith. So you all have a gift of prophecy according to the measure of faith. That's what like this whole session is about, like igniting that faith, like sparking that faith. And the dunamis power is going to manifest upon you so that you can operate in such a deposit of deposit of faith, deposit of glory. And God is going to activate you. You're going to be trained to hear God's voice. You're going to be trained to see visions. You're going to be trained to see dreams. How? 
you are going to be filled with the prophetic anointing the substance is prophetic anointing but the visions and dreams and words uh, and actions and um, so many things are the are the things that is really around the prophetic anointing so the people in the bible they they receive that prophetic anointing they are able to sense they know that god has secrets and as we look unto god and we can able to uh, god it is the glory of the king to search the matter i'm i'm the king of god god appointed as kings priests and royal priesthood so i deep dive into god's presence and then i take the pearl and i give it to the people for edification exhortation and comfort thank you jesus i'm releasing a blessings and breakthrough upon everyone that everyone's life be transformed and blessed thank you jesus in jesus name i pray amen god bless you all and uh you all have a wonderful wonderful blessed day and uh yes you can unmute if you want and god bless you you all have a wonderful blessed day and i uh, will see you all uh not next week next week uh, i'm going to california so if you are from california uh come to california you can see my website albertmilton.com and uh even <coughs> i encourage you to come if you are around uh so it's going to be a prophetic conference and um, um yeah and i will see you all probably like second week of february i will keep you posted